like to start with a half kiddish. Let the glory of God be extolled, let his great name be hallowed in the world whose creation he willed. May his kingdom soon prevail in our own day, our own lives and the life of all Israel, and say Amen. Now in the Bible, um, we have who is called for the morning star. Now this is a metaphor, and unless you have extensive biblical training in astronomy, not astrology, in astronomy, then you cannot know really what that means in the heavens. The heaven of heavens is where Elohim Yahweh dwells, where the dragon has been kicked out from, and also a little bit about the dragon at this point is, you know, God keeps bringing me to a sister's testimony about Hasatan. Uh, you know, when we think of Satan, we just think of this fallen uh, spirit being, but really, uh, it, it really is, is, is not that, it is that, and it's a lot more as well. Uh, this girl's testimony saw that the dragon was split up into three parts at its, at its fall. Um, now, when Hasatan fell, he fell out of the heaven of heavens, and also it's written, in the last days he has fallen to earth. It says, Woe to you, the inhabitants of the earth. Satan has fallen down to you, and has but a short time, and is full of wrath. Now, um, isn't it strange that uh, you know we have increased in technology so much over the past few decades uh, without really much of an explanation as to why that is and I would put it to you that all the heavenly host which has followed after Hasatan and S Satan himself I believe is still lingering in the upper parts of the earth uh, and indeed of the, of the heaven it's been kicked out of the heaven of heavens but I, I believe that uh, in the last days you will literally see some kind of uh, fallen angelic dragon uh, because we have the technology now to see all these things and what we're actually seeing just now is the prerequisites those that have also followed the satan uh, are around the earth and fallen angels are not spirit, they are actually physical beings who are actually capable of doing spiritual things as well um, but obviously they've long since fallen from grace and their only intent is to lie and deceive and to make mankind subject to their will remember this was Lucifer's cry in Ezekiel and Isaiah I shall be likened unto the Most High I shall stand in the Mount of the Congregation now what congregation are we talking about? Churches? Synagogues? What else? All uh, congregations of, of religious service. Uh, Hasatan, uh, you know, has declared that he would be likened to the Most High. He would be called God and worshipped as God on earth. Now would it make sense that there are uh, parts of Hasatan which are fallen angels? Now, a little bit more about Satan the dragon was a fallen cherub. And in the Bible we know that cherubs are made up of quite quite a few different uh, things. Um, now cherubs were, were actually referred to in the Bible as transporting the throne of Elohim around the physical 3D universe. Uh, you know, what we can see basically. Um, and when, when the cherub fell, I believe, it actually split up into three general parts. <laughs> so going back to what I said yesterday about the Ain, okay, remember the I was representing education. Now, what we have in Yahshua is a lot different because when we accept him, it's no external 
uh, and this is basically what Paul was trying to explain. It's no external uh, way of learning salvation. When we accept the Messiah, uh, he gives us his Holy Spirit, and that comes from heaven. Okay, now this is the difference between what the world calls salvation through learning and, uh, you know, which is represented by the Ain in the Hebrew, or the O in the English letter. Uh, the Ain sounds like I as well. And, you know, uh, you know what the world calls salvation and what, what we know as salvation in the Bible, and that name is actually Yeshua in Hebrew. Uh, and that's why, um, you know, if you truly confess Jesus Christ as the son of Elohim, of Yahweh, then we re what we're really saying is that uh, Yahweh himself has came in the flesh. Now this is what the apostles were talking about and rebuking uh, certain uh, churches for not saying, because what they were doing is saying that uh, Jesus or Yeshua wasn't Yahweh. And that was the first one of the first apostasies that happened. Now, Yahweh is complex in his unity. Okay, uh, there is the Father, there is the Son, and there is the Holy Spirit. But also, uh, you also notice that his creation, man, is made up of. And the first commandment is, "You love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and strength." So that's that's three three things that we're made up of, all our heart, all our spirit, all our mind, all our intellect that God has given us, and all our strength, all our physical endeavour. Now there's three things straight away. Now, when we worship a trinity, it does not mean to say that we're worshipping the true Elohim, the true God. Well, between all the spiritual implications of the book, as well as technological, showing uh, exactly what's going on in our Earth today, on our planet, um, I'd just like to read out a quick excerpt from Chapter 3, which is called Welcome Home, Dorks. Now, this is when Captain Callus, who is from Earth, and I might point out that uh, you know this isn't this isn't like um, Star Trek or Star Wars, whereby it was getting people used to um, there being aliens. Okay, this book really explains that these aliens, wherever they're from, are in fact corrupt, and uh, even some of the some of the better characters in the book, um, which I won't really give away. Obviously, if you want to download it and read it yourself, but you know, it's uh, it is quite subtle in the fact that um, it doesn't really give much away until until the end. Um, so, so this is when they actually find um, a part of a space station where all kinds of um, beings. Um, and now we know in the Bible that uh, there were um, cat-like men. There were all types of monsters um, that were there around the time of David, which is mentioned in the Book of Kings. Remember the tribes of so they're all meeting together in this place, and Jopo is, is an alien that's that's, that's kind of helping um, translate for the captain all the different languages. Overhead, the dome zoomed in one of the three closest stars, a green one, and showed a picture of the galaxy's main planet. Seats again reclined, and the screen moved to a turquoise star at the right side of the star belt. It zoomed in to display a far smaller planet than the last, with only 26 million inhabitants and with no distinctive technology. This is the planet Macrium, populated by Catalans. These pictures were taken by satellite just over a year ago. Notice the movement to the top right of the picture, then clearly down to the planet on the left. 
What is it? asked Kiani. We are hoping one of you could tell us. This is what this meeting is all about. There's not much to go on, but we can freeze the frame. We are looking for a positive ID on the craft. At the moment it's classed as a UFO. Kiani laughed. I'm sorry, Jopo. It's just so weird to hear that expression from a real alien, you know. So generally they're just trying to work out what's happened to this planet Macrium. It seems to have gone down the same um, slippery slope as the previous planet.